Now we'll be looking at the cross section of the spinal cord. First, I draw on the spinal cord cross section with the central canal over here, the median fissure on the anterior side, the anterolateral sulcus, the posterolateral sulcus, and of course, we have the gray matter. The, this over here, uh, this is the anterior horn, and then comes the posterior horn. There it goes. The posterior horn, the sensible horn, and the motor horn, the anterior horn. Now, around the spinal cord attached to its surface, there is a pia matter. You cannot see it here because I illustrated the pia matter with white color and the background is white. But when I draw other meninges, you will be able to see it. Now, I will illustrate the brain here. And let's say that this is the spinal cord. The pia matter is simply attached to the surface of this brain. It follows each curvature of the brain, each sulcus and each gyrus. It is also attached to the surface of the spinal cord. So it doesn't change anything, it just goes along with the surface. Then comes the arachnoid motor. So this is the arachnoid motor. And this over here, this white thing, was the pia mater. So pia mater. And this other thing was arachnoid mater. This cavity between the arachnoid mater and the pia mater is called the subarachnoid cavity. So here we have the arachnoid mater. And now comes the dura mater. If you don't know what dura mater is or what's it created of, you should go back and watch the videos about the brain membranes. In those videos, I explained that dura mater consists of two layers, one inner and one outer layer. Those layers in the skull, in around the brain, can be sometimes separated and sometimes attached to each other, more attached than separated. For example, when they separate, they create the cerebral fox. I also drawn that in those lessons. However, in the spinal cord, they are always separated. So around the brain, we had two layers of dura mater. This is the meningeal layer, the inner layer. And around it, there is a periosteal layer. Mostly they are attached to each other. And then when they exit the skull to the foramen magnum, one layer goes along with the bone of the vertebrae. And another layer creates the dural sac. This is the layer that we can see here. So this over here is the dura mater layer, the inner layer of dura mater. So this is not the outer layer. As you can see here, I left some space over here to illustrate the spinal nerve and the roots of spinal nerves leaving the vertebra column. But between those spinal nerves and the roots of spinal nerves, they are denticulate ligaments. The denticulate ligaments are simply the pia mater that leaves the surface of the spinal cord and attaches to the dura mater between two uh, exit places of spinal nerves, so between two spinal nerves. And of course, here's the posterior root of the spinal nerve, and here is the anterior root. And of course, we have the same on the other side. Now, just to point out, the posterior root, it goes like this. All the way the fibers go this way. And then you have the cell body here. That's why the spinal ganglion is here. And then it goes further. Now what happens with the anterior root? It doesn't have cell body in the ganglion. And it joins the posterior root right after the spinal ganglion. So they are separated all the time over here, they are separated. And the spinal ganglion is created by the posterior root of spinal nerve. I have said that the pia mater and the arachnoid mater create the endonervium of the peripheral nerve. Over here, they become the endonervium and not the meninges anymore. 
and the Dura Mater over here becomes perinurium and epinurium. If you don't know what that is, you should go back and watch the lesson about the peripheral nerve. And remember, this is the inner layer, this layer over here, the blue layer of Dura Mater. Other layer will come somewhere over here. I will illustrate it later. But between those two layers, there is a fat tissue and some veins. Here I photoshopped it a little bit. So this is the body of the vertebra. Then comes the transfer as a process. And uh, the lamina, the spinosis process. Then the same on the other side. I try to illustrate this as much as realistic I can and to draw as much as details I know. So this over here is the sup superior articular process and this over here same on the other side. The inferior articular process and over here as I said the transverse process and the body of the vertebra with the spongy bone inside and the compact bone outside. Um, this one here is the spinal process. But this is not lesson about bones, this is narrow anatomy lesson. So I will illustrate this last layer of Dura Mater and as I said it goes along with the bone. So over here also. And that's it. And the space between these two layers, the layer that creates the dural sac and the periosteal layer this, this this space over here is called the epidural space. Now I will just write everything fast that we have learned. We had the inner layer of Dura Mater and over here was also Dura Mater but the outer the periosteal Dura Mater. Then we had the spinal ganglion over here. The arachnoid mater the very thin layer of pia mater. We had the posterior root or spinal nerve. Then we had the anterior root. Then we had the gray matter over here. And the white matter. And between these roots of the spinal nerve, you cannot see it clearly here, but I will illustrate it better in the next image, is the denticulate ligament. This over here was the central canal. This was the anterior and the posterior horn, the medium fissure, the anterior lateral sulcus over here, the posterior lateral sulcus over here, the median septum, and the median sulcus over here and that's pretty much it and here we see the dorsal view of the spinal cord as you can remember I said that there are dorsal roots of the spinal nerve coming out of dorsal lateral sulcus there are also anterior roots of the spinal nerve that come from the anterolateral lateral sulcus we cannot see the sulcus from here because this is the dorsal view of the spinal cord then remember I said it all over this, all over these structures there is a pia mater uh, so there's no point of illustrating it uh, but just know that all over the roots and the spinal cord there is a small thin layer of pia mater. Then comes the arachnoid mater and the dura mater. Okay this space over here between the arachnoid mater and the pia mater is called the subarachnoid space and the space between the dura mater and the arachnoid mater is called the subdural space. As I said before if you go back the pia mater and arachnoid mater here they create the endoneurium and the dura mater creates the perineurium and the epineurium of the peripheral nerve over here. And between each exit of the spinal nerve on the dura mater, there is a denticulate ligament attached to the dura mater. It is simply the pia mater that left the surface and 
continued on and attached to the dura mater. So you can see it here, it goes over here. So it's simply the pure mater from the surface of the spinal cord goes, it leaves the surface and it attaches to the dura mater. It attaches to the dura mater between two spinal nerves here, here, here. Uh, this was a lesson about the spinal cord meninges and if you like my drawings and my illustrations you might as well like my software. Please check out my website flashbrainanatomy.com